Guys, welcome to the Bear Brain Podcast, where the goals to rise above it all, stay elevated, create that infinity, up you, you. I'm your host, Isaiah. Today is going to be kind of a mixed bag, right? Because I think what I've understood about myself is the tendency to intellectualize feelings versus feeling them. So I think that'll unravel some things for us. That's what's on my heart the most, I think, this week. It's been an interesting week in terms of thoughts and feelings. And, you know, I don't want to speak for anybody, but I think a lot of times we have the tendency to intellectualize feelings versus just feeling them, right? So somebody asks you, hey, tell me how you feel. What's your answer? All right, so we're going to get into that, and I'm going to kind of walk you through the week. Uh, yeah, I'm going to just do my best to kind of collect my thoughts and collect myself in terms of, you know, what the week has been or the things that stick out to me the most. And we're just going to go into it, all right? So if you're at home, get yourself comfy. If you're driving, wear a seatbelt. Get yourself comfy. All right, <laughs> so we're going to get into it. Stay tuned. Hey guys, what's going on? Firstly, I want to shout out a new Patreon subscriber, Miss Monica Lopez. Shout out. Thank you for supporting the podcast and thank you for being here. Um, it's always dope to have a new subscriber and shout out to all the subscribers, Apple Podcast subscribers, Patreon subscribers. I appreciate the love that you guys show. It helps, right? It helps, keeps this birdie afloat. It's... uh. I remember when I first started, I, uh, when I first created a patron, I was like, man, I don't know what to offer, right? I don't know what bonus content would be good to, to offer because, you know, there's some people, it's funny because as a filmmaker, uh, you know, some people suggested, oh yeah, you know, do this, do this, like show behind the scenes stuff and all that. And I'm like... The funny thing about this podcast, guys, when I record it, like right now I'm recording, it's early in the morning. And the reason why I'm recording early in the morning is because the world is still asleep for me. So lately I've been waking up at three, four in the morning and I'll go to the gym, right? And I start my day. But I like going to the gym that early because the rest of the world is still asleep. So it's like time to think, time to feel sometimes but time to just process right and uh, going back to the the patreon and at first i was like i don't know what other bonus content to give i was like i don't really know and i just give more of what i'm already providing and what i recognize is that what i provide is enough right what i provide is more than enough some people value it some people don't and it's not up to me and as I say this to myself, I say it to you. It will never be up to you to force your value on some someone, right? People who value you will value you. People who don't, they don't, right? But it doesn't mean you're not a value, right? Um, and I think society shows us how our value system is just our value system. It's a personal thing. You get me? Uh, and that's a reminder because I do recognize how much work goes into this podcast, how much work goes into me just showing up. <laughs> you know, sometimes you're, you're ordinary as someone else is extraordinary. And I think a lot of times when we do a lot, we don't realize how impactful it can be and how much we should appreciate it. You know, sometimes the world tells you, yeah, love yourself and appreciate yourself. And then when you say it out loud, how much you're worth and how much you're valued, it kind of rubs people the wrong way. Or they're like, oh, you're too this or 
And it's like, no, I'm just not waiting on you to tell me what I am and what I'm not or how much I'm worth to you and how much I'm not. So, you know, starting the Patreon was a big thing for me. Even creating merch, like the, 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 the thing about it, guys, is when you are operating from your truth, right? You're pulling from your own, your own well and you're being your unique self. It could be scary, right? Be scary. It could be uncertain. The reason why is because you don't have a, you don't have a blueprint. You are the blueprint. You don't have a reference point. You have you, (laughs) right? And you just go out and do your own thing. You just keep doing it. And that's what it's been for me is like every year there's been some level of growth or transition in, in everything that I do, truth be told. And, uh, you know, the podcast especially, and I, I think I've said this, or I know I've said it multiple times in different episodes, like the humbling thing about doing this is that I didn't expect it to go past one episode. And that was coming up on five years ago. Right. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was just like, I'm going to do this. <laughs> See what happens and do it with intention, though right? That's the most important thing, doing things with intention. With anything, if your heart is not in it, you're not there. And I think that even kind of translates to feelings, right? Sometimes we, um, or we, I, intellectualize my feelings more than I feel them. And it's almost, you know, we don't think about it that way, right? Because it's like when we talk about vulnerability and being open and everything like that, there's a difference, which I've learned too. There's a difference between vulnerability and being open. I can openly talk about certain things, but is that vulnerability? Not necessarily, right? Vulnerability is really having the, uh, the access to what exactly is going on. And vulnerability is not the same thing as being emotional, <laughs> right? Emotional excess or access is not the same thing as vulnerability, okay? Vulnerability is just this state of um, owning your truth and recognizing exactly what's going on, right? Processing it, feeling it, you get me? Versus just being able to talk about it. Like somebody asks, hey, how do you feel? I feel sad or I feel frustrated, you know, and this, 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 and this, and this. And sometimes you'd mistake that for vulnerability. Oh man, this person is vulnerable, right? They're talking about their feelings, but that's the thing. Sometimes our feelings are more of a thought than it is an actual feeling. (laughs) You get me? And how you kind of know that is when somebody catches you off guard one day. And like, hey, are you okay? What's the matter? How do you feel? And it's in that moment where you don't have time to necessarily talk through and it just hits you. (laughs) And you're like, whoa, (laughs) whoa, 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 whoa. You know, I've been carrying this much around for a while and now it's finally coming up and it just takes the right amount of something for it to kind of, you know, just hit you in that way. And I think it's an amazing thing when it does happen um, because it just reminds you that you're still human having a human experience. And a lot of times we intellectualize our feelings, one, because we have the, the intelligence to do it, but also it's almost a way of us taking care of other people, right? If I could just talk through my feelings composed and, and civil and, and, and regal and, and, and stable, it doesn't make you feel comfortable. It doesn't make you feel like you have to take care of me. It doesn't make you feel helpless if you can't take care of me, right? It doesn't make you feel like you have to jump into action. I'm protecting you from rejecting me. Does that make sense? Sometimes when we intellectualize our feelings, it's almost us letting other people know, hey, it's okay. Yeah, I know my arm is falling off. (laughs) It's all right. It's all right. You know, um, the limbs are still attached. You know, the bone is here. You can see the bone is kind of broken at a certain angle where it could be repaired. 
And if we have, uh, you know, if we have access to a hospital, we could get to there immediately. And yes, it hurts a little bit right now. But um, yeah, that's just a part of the process because there's nerve damage, etc. You see, like intellectualizing the whole process versus being like, hey, this fucking hurts. <laughs> I'm freaking out. I'm panicking. I don't know what's going on. This hurts and I'm scared. That's a different level of awareness, <laughs> but also vulnerability, right? Um, I think Brene Brown, she talks about it in, in Daring Greatly. I haven't read that book in so year, in so many years, but the one of the concepts or the big concept was uh, vulnerability, understanding what that means. And even in conversations with, with people, being vulnerable looks like Having your truth come out through your words. Because empathy, right? Not everybody has the same level of empathy. A lot of people don't have empathy. Empathy is a word that's thrown around, but people don't know what empathy is. right? A lot of people don't know what empathy is. And I know that by how forceful people can be about someone else's level of tolerance and acceptance of certain behaviors. Right. Or lack thereof. It's like that tells me right then and there you lack empathy because empathy is the ability to understand somebody else's uh, situation. All right. So when I am talking to people or people are talking to me, like even with my clients. Right. I love I go back to this as a mental health coach, as a life coach. The beautiful thing about working with people is the ability to just listen the ability to listen, the ability to understand what's going on and recognizing the responsibility of offering a unique solution to this particular person. And when I listen to people talk, I'm also listening for what they're communicating. Because again, there's a difference between intellectualizing your feelings and feeling a feeling. So sometimes people would tell me certain things and I'm like, okay, so it sounds like you feel this, this, and this, or is this potentially a feeling, right? Asking questions, uh, you know, being a soundboard because that'll allow them to have more confidence about expressing themselves in a way of like, one, you're safe Two, you don't have to take care of me in this moment, right? You're not here to take care of me. So you can be and feel what you need to. So we can get past this moment, right? Work through this moment. And that's so beautiful and it's something that I'm grateful and humbled by because it only further enhances, right, my ability to hold myself accountable but also my ability to recognize when I may be intellectualizing versus actually feeling my feelings. And sometimes we can be too smart for our own good, right? You can be too smart for your own good, okay? And when you intellectualize your feelings, it's important to kind of dip back into your past and say, well, at what point did I have to kind of take care of myself all the time? Self-soothe, right? What did that look like? And if somebody was denying my feelings, did I have to go through this debriefing of asking myself, is this true or is this not, right? Intellectualizing your feelings comes from a lot of things, a lot of things. And it's great people who have emotional access. I love that. I love that for them. That's that's dope, right? But one of the things I recognize is being emotional isn't always being vulnerable, right? And I talked about that on the spring cleaning episode, right? There's a difference between emotional availability and vulnerability. Sometimes people want someone to be emotionally available. Sometimes people can use that as manipulation, right? Or sometimes your feelings, your 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 emotional process and how you actually feel can be misconstrued, right? Everything in moderation is what I'm understanding. And I think for me, you know, last week, there was so many things, when we have so many things going on, right? We're trying to compartmentalize and figure out where, where things belong. What's my experience right now? Where does this belong? Can I deal with this later? Do I deal with it now? Uh, but I still got this work call. 
I still got this deadline. I got to do this. I got to go shopping. Got to do laundry. Oh, man, if I have kids, I got to make sure that they're good. What about their feelings? If I'm in a relationship, oh, man, what do I got to do about this, right? My friendships, how are those doing? You get me? So we never really have the time to process what we're feeling and, and what's going on and how we're actually doing. And sometimes it catches us off guard when other people ask. Right. If people cared enough to ask, if people recognize that something may be transpired and then it hits. Right. If you don't process what you're feeling and recognize how to feel your feelings. And I think a lot of times we are afraid to feel that. Right. Because like I don't have time to feel that. I don't have time to feel those feelings. I'll never forget. I was in New York. Um, I forget. I think I was on my way home from work. And this happened to me, but I also have seen it happen to other people. Like I was on my way home from from somewhere and I was on a train and there's something so interesting. I think I wrote something about this a while ago. There's something so interesting about being underground on a subway because life is still happening while you're confined in that tunnel. And I remember there was this woman I was standing across from on the train. And she was just crying, right? She was just crying, trying to hold it together on the train. And it was nothing that she could really do because we were underground (laughs) in a tunnel. And life was still happening for her in that moment. You get me? And it's happened to me before where I'm kind of on the train going from one place to another. And life just hits me, right? Or even driving in a car, you know? Life just kind of hits and I'm confined to this space, right? I'm confined to this space, but life is still happening, okay? And that's when I know, all right, cool. There's so much more going on in me that I'm holding on to than what I'm actually feeling. I can talk about it. I can be like, yeah, you know, just got this going on. I guess I'm sad. I guess I'm angry. I guess I'm uncertain, But what does that feel like? Right? What does it feel like in your body? Where does it resonate in your body? Right? A feeling is a feeling. Like right now, I have my hands clasped together. And I didn't even realize until just now. Right? I felt the warmth of one of my hands on the other hand. And now I recognize, all right, cool, my hands are clasped together. This feels, right? I feel this. I feel the calluses on my hands from working out, <laughs> right? I feel the um, the scars on my hands, right? From history of things, right? I feel this, okay? And when I rubbed my scar just now, like it kind of pinged my heart a little bit, right? It, it resonated in my heart, right? So when you recognize what you're feeling, that's a whole different ball game because how your body responds and what it communicates in return is 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 different than just saying, yeah, I feel, I felt angry. It's like, yeah, you don't seem like, it. it's like, yeah, I felt angry. <laughs> um, I remember, you know, even in acting classes, the most difficult um, emotion for me was to feel anger. Anger, right? I could say I'm angry and it may be in my body somewhere, but to express it, not necessarily to even feel it nah, wasn't really there because I was always intellectualizing. And sometimes we intellectualize our feelings because we're also trying so hard to understand other people's feelings, other people's behaviors. I do that a lot. You know, you spend so much time trying to be in the mind of somebody else, a.k.a. empathy and be in somebody else's shoes that you kind of. You feed yourself last. You feed your feelings last. So they starve. They only exist in your head versus actually going through your body. And again, sometimes we're afraid to feel our feelings. The reason why, because we think we'll unravel. Well, sometimes you need to do that. Sometimes you need to be stuck on a train and kind of have a moment of breakdown. That's vulnerability, man. That's crazy. Right? Having that, you're open to so much. Right? And I remember asking her, like I offered her a tissue and she was like, no, I'm fine. Thank you. 
And I know for a fact, for one, you weren't fine. But you kind of felt embarrassed that you were not okay. And you didn't potentially want me to be uncomfortable with what you were feeling. Right? Sometimes, you know, somebody offers us help. Hey, are you okay? You're like, yeah, I'm okay. It's like, obviously you're not okay. (laughs) So why did you say that? Because it's a defense mechanism, right? The world tells us we always have to be okay all the time. So when we're not okay, we still have to remind others, hey, I'm okay. So you're okay, right? I'm okay. So you don't have to worry about me. So don't, don't worry. Don't stress. Everything's fine. You're good. And it's like, but I'm not okay. And if I actually take time to feel what I'm feeling, I could probably actually communicate to you properly what I need. Right? The more we feel our feelings, the more we'll recognize where the healing needs to happen. Okay? The more honest and authentic we'll show up in our relationships and the more, you know, people on the opposite end, we can figure out who we're on the opposite end of, But we'll also kind of allow ourselves to just kind of be put back together with the help of some people who want to be there and take care of us. But it it requires bravery. Vulnerability is bravery. Vulnerability is not weakness because you are open to so many things. That's vulnerability. Right? You're exposed. So now what? But it's a beautiful thing, guys, because you learn so much. You learn so damn much. And you grow. Right? You grow. And you keep growing. Everything in moderation, okay? Like, it's cool to recognize how you feel, but it's also necessary to be able to feel those things. (laughs) Pay attention to your body. Right. See what's going on, where it's happening. Right. When your feelings get hurt. Where does that come up? Right. Does your face get hot? Does your chest get heavy? Does it hit you in your stomach? Right. Um, There was this conversation I saw on TikTok uh, about this woman talking about how when you recognize in your friendships, there's a discrepancy like you may value a friend more than they value you. Right. And then you might have to make a decision of kind of uh, downgrading that friend or keeping them in your life. Right. Because it hurts so much to recognize that this person who means so much to me, I don't mean as much to. When you think about that. How much that hurts, think of it in any relationship, how much it hurts, like what where does it happen in your body? Just thinking about that for me, it hits my chest like that's a weight, right? Hit your chest. Sometimes it hits your stomach. But those are feelings, right? That's how you recognize your feelings. And the more in tune you are with your feelings, instead of just intellectualizing, you could kind of work through things. You could remedy things a little bit. You can now have more honest conversations with yourself and others. But you can also give yourself permission to be like, hey, it's okay to not be okay. You're good. You're safe still. <laughs> Right. Whether you're in a train or in a car. But I think there's such a beautiful thing about not being able to hide yourself or um, force your feelings to not show up in those moments. Right. A long go on a long car ride. Put some music on or no music. Actually, don't don't put any music on and just see what happens and ask yourself what's going on. How do I feel? What's the matter? See what comes up for you. And then go from there. Okay. Sit down with yourself. Ask someone that's important to you. Hey, how are you? How do you feel? And when you ask them, how do you feel? Listen to what they tell you. Because sometimes people, I'm like, hey, how are you feeling? And they're like, well, busy day at work. Had this go on. And I'm like, but how do you feel? I didn't ask you to tell me what you did today. <laughs> what happened in your day. Tell me how you feel. There's vulnerability there. All right, so just remember that. That's all I got, guys. Um, 
Yes, if you missed the self-confidence workshop, I'll be having more workshops in the future. But uh, shout out to all the people that showed up. It's a beautiful thing when we show up for ourselves, yeah? <laughs> There's always some growth that happens. It's inevitable, okay? Um, I have slots open for clients, one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching. The link is in the description of this episode. Also, if you want to become a supporter, Patreon, Apple Subscribe. Link is also here. If you want to buy merch, link is there. If you want to get the coloring book, link is there. <laughs> All the links are there. We're linked up, baby. <laughs> All right. So I hope you guys are well. I hope you are taking care of yourselves. I hope you are taking care of each other more than anything. Just take flight.